Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer.com. Today on our 2019 Ford Explorer, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Blue Ox base plate kit with removable arms. Now there's going to be five main components needed to flat tow your Explorer down the road safely. One of them is going to be the base plate here, which provides us with a solid and reliable connection point to hook up our tow bar to. The tow bar is going to go from the base plate to the back of the motorhome. We're also going to have safety cables, which is a secondary connection, just in case in the event of a catastrophic disconnect, the safety cables are gonna keep everything connected together. We're also going to have wiring. Here we have diode wiring, and this is going to transfer the lighting signals from the back of the motorhome to the back of your Explorer, so everyone can see and know your intentions as you go down the road. Lastly, we're going to have a braking system. Now the braking system is going to stop the Explorer using its own brakes instead of relying on the motorhome to slow it down. Now what I really like about this base plate kit is not only is that it's going to give us a clean appearance when we're not using it, it's going to blend in pretty good, but it's also going to come pre-made, if you will, with bracketry already attached to the base plate that way it makes mounting up all of our other flat toe components really easy and convenient. Now when you are ready to use a base plate, it's going to be really easy and straightforward. We'll just pull out the protective plugs, take your arms, and work them in, push down and spin it about 90 degrees, and those pins are going to lock into place. It's going to work the same for the other side too. Now the purpose of our base plate is to provide us with a really reliable and solid connection point that our tow bar will connect to, which will go to our motorhome. We're going to have that peace of mind knowing that our Explorer isn't going anywhere. The base plate's also going to have some spots here where we can attach our safety cables. Now these aren't going to be incredibly easy to get to, but in my opinion, it's worth having to deal with this a little bit. That way we don't have to sacrifice the look of the front of our Explorer. Now, as far as getting the base plate installed, it is a little bit involved and does take a little bit of time, but there's really nothing too crazy about it. All the steps are relatively straightforward and should be able to do it with no problem in your garage or maybe even your driveway. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put the base plate on together now. To begin our install, we're gonna be working underneath the hood here. So I went ahead and lifted it. What we're going to do is remove this plastic radiator cover along this top edge. We're going to take out seven 10 millimeter screws just like this along the front of our cover. Now we can get these push pin fasteners removed. We're going to have two of them total. To get these out, you can take a trim panel tool or a flathead screwdriver. I'm gonna pry underneath the head of the fastener to lift it up. And you can get under the base and get it pulled out. So we'll use that same technique for this one over here. And we're able to grab our cover and set it to the side. Now if we move over here to our wheel well, we're gonna have seven screws that we're gonna need to get removed along this edge. And we're gonna do that using a five and a half millimeter socket. And once we have all them out, what we can kind of do is take our wheel well liner and just kind of peel it back because we're gonna to need to access a handful of bolts up here in this area behind our liner. So with our wheel well liner kind of peeled back out of the way, we can get access to the bolts. We're gonna be removing these three along this edge here where the quarter panel actually meets our fender. So we'll grab a 10 millimeter socket and get those pulled out. Now the other side of our car is set up the same way. So we'll just repeat this process over there. Now if we move underneath our Explorer, we're gonna have some fasteners we need to remove. 
We're going to have three 8 millimeter bolts right here in the center. And take those out. Then we're going to have three just like this on each side. Now we can separate this plastic fender flare here from our fascia itself. And to do that, you can just do it by hand, kind of bend it inward a little bit and pull out. And that'll just release some of the little clips that are holding it in place. Now you don't have to get too far up, you just need to get it released past where our fascia meets the quarter panel. We're gonna do that on each side. Now we can actually remove our fascia and so you, you want to get an extra set of hands, the way you have a person on each side, and you can pull down here at the corner, and that'll separate it, and then we can just carefully work it off the front of our Explorer. Now you don't want to pull out too fast because we may have some electrical connections. On the driver's side, you will have an electrical connection. To get it undone, you simply push down in the center of the tab and pop the two apart. Now we are going to have a washer fluid hose that actually connects to the front of our fascia. Since we are going to have to remove this anyway, we will need to disconnect everything. So what I'm going to do is just shorten up the hose a little bit. Just cut it. Then you can just take one of the bolts that we removed and just kind of stick it in the end of the line to stop any fluid from coming out. Now with everything disconnected, we can grab our fascia and set it off to the side somewhere safe. With the fascia out of the way, we can now get our washer fluid reservoir removed. So there's a couple things we're going to need to do to get that done. First, we're going to disconnect the electrical going to it. Push down on the center of the tab. Pull up at the same time. Now the wiring is going to be connected to the tank You're in a few spots. Take a trim panel tool or a flathead screwdriver. I'm gonna pry underneath those fasteners to get our electrical disconnected from the tank itself. And just set this off to the side. Now what we can do is pull our lines and get them plugged. So this one here you can just kind of work it out like so. I'll just again grab one of the screws that we removed from the fascia earlier and that'll kind of plug it. And same thing with this one here. Get it removed and plug it with one of the screws. Now we're going to have a handful of fasteners that's actually holding the tank in. We're going to have a 10 millimeter nut here. There's also going to be one pretty much exactly the same here in this very back corner. Another one right here, which is a eight millimeter. You can kind of pull a tank off of those studs, sneak it out. And just set it to the side for now. Now we are going to have a few pieces that we need to trim here in the front. One of them being this bottom edge here. So I'm going to go ahead and drew a line where we're going to cut and we're going to get that out of the way. I'm going to use a Dremel tool to do that. However, it's relatively thin plastic. You could probably use a pair of snips or something along those lines too. to have to trim some material off of our shutters and that's because these do open and close so they'll come down this way and that could potentially interfere with their base plate so that's why we're cutting them. Now there's a diagram of the instructions which I followed and just marked it out here and so again I'll just use my Dremel tool to get that material removed. Oh, 
have both pieces cut out, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. On the sides here, we can kind of trim off these flaps. I'm gonna try to get these as flush as possible, especially over here on the driver's side where this motor is. So again, made a mark and I'll just cut down like this. You just repeat that same process over on the other side. Over here on the driver's side, we're gonna have this little flap of plastic, so we'll go ahead and get that trimmed off too. What we can do now is enlarge this opening here a little bit, and that'll give us enough room to have an access hole. That way we can get some of our hardware inside of the frame rail. So with the hole enlarged, we're trying to make it big enough that way we can fit this large handle nut in. So just kind of carefully line it up. I'll be verified it will indeed fit in there. What I'm gonna do is kind of come back with the file and clean up some of these sharp edges. And then since we do have some better metal here now, take some spray paint, just cover that to help protect it from rust and corrosion. And then we're going to repeat this whole process over on the other side. So now what we can do is actually hold our base plate up into position. There's going to be a bracket on the base plate that sits flush against the bottom of our frame rail here. There's going to be a hole in that bracket that lines up with this hole here. So while we're holding that up, what we're going to do is take one of our large bolts and a split lock washer, put some red Loctite on it, I want to mention any of the hardware that we're going to use to hold the base plate on is going to get some of this red Loctite. And if you need some, you can find it here at eTrailer. So imagine our base plate sitting flush against here. We're going to take our bolt, run it through both of them, and then we can take our handle nut and push it through that hole that we created and get that drop down in there. And this bolt will actually thread into the handle nut and that's gonna hold our base plate up. Our base plate in position, we can use the hardware that we talked about. Slide it up in the opening. And we'll take our handle nut and you can't actually bend uh, the handle portion, just be really careful. You don't want that nut to separate from the handle or else you have a difficult time trying to get everything in there. So after we put a few bends in it, we can sneak it in, line up the nut with our bolt, and we can get the two threaded together. We're just gonna leave them hand tight for now. We're just gonna get this one hand tight for now. And something I do wanna mention from this point on, anything we do to one side of the vehicle, we're gonna repeat that process for the other side. So now we can do is take our brackets. Now these are side specific. So for example, I'm over here on the passenger side and you're gonna want this top portion to point down like this. So it'll look like that. What we're gonna do is through these holes here from the outside end, we're going to take a hex bolt and a split lock washer. Again, use your red lock tight. Run those through. We're going to slide our bracket over it. Let me kind of hold it in place. I'm going to put on a flat washer, followed by a nylon lock nut. We're just going to get both of these hand tight for now. Now what we're gonna do is grab this hex bolt and a flat washer. And over here on the passenger side, this is going to go through this hole in our bracket into this portion of our K-member here on the vehicle. Then we can take our handle nut and put a bend in it, almost a 90 degree bend right at the base of the handle nut. We're gonna go up through this hole Sometimes if you kind of pull everything out, you can line it up pretty good. So 
we're just going to get this hand tight for now. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the other side will be set up the same way, except with one exception for this particular case. And the other side is going to use this hole in the bracket as opposed to this inside one. With all of that hardware in place, we can go ahead and tighten down this bolt as well as these two. Now we can come back and tighten down our big bolts. I'm gonna do that with a one and one eighth inch socket. Now we can come back with a torque wrench and torque all of our hardware down in that same order. Now you can find your torque specifications and your instructions. On the side of our base plate, there's going to be two holes that's drilled into the base plate. And what we're going to do is use those holes as a template to create an opening in our frame rail. So I'm going to grab a 3 8 drill bit and get both of those drilled out. Now we can get our hardware installed. We're gonna take a handle nut and get it bent. And we're gonna start with the hole back here close to the rear of the vehicle. We're gonna push the handle nut in through the opening that we created earlier. Get it lined up. Then we're gonna take a hex bolt and a split lock washer. Again, don't forget your Loctite. And we're gonna get this started hand tight. We're going to use the same handle nut and hardware combination for this front hole. Once our hardware is in and hand tight, come back and snug them down. And we can follow that up with our torque wrench and tighten them down to the amount specified in the instructions. Once all your hardware is installed, you can come back and clip off the remaining parts of our handle nuts. We're gonna go ahead and take our included safety cables and get these attached. So we're gonna take one end up through the large hole, our K-member. We're gonna run that towards the front. That's going to go around our base plate like that. Take the D link and run that through. Go ahead and tighten down this portion and come back with a wrench and get it completely snug. Once we have the other side done, we can kind of come back. Maybe try to zip tie them together. That way we don't have to worry about them rattling around and making a bunch of noise. So what I went ahead and did was use a large zip tie and pulled our safety cable tight and zip tied it. That way we don't have to worry about it bouncing around making a lot of noise. Now if you don't have a very large zip tie, uh, you could always find some or just put together three or four smaller ones to achieve the same thing. Now we can get our windshield washer fluid reservoir reinstalled. And so what we're gonna do is just take nine of the included washers, and I just taped them together to make it a little more manageable here. I'm gonna slide that over one of the studs, another nine washers over that stud. We can put our tank back in a position. We're gonna resecure it using the factory nuts. Now the bolt that held the washer fluid tank on that went right here, we will not be reinstalling that bolt. So we just gotta worry about these two. That being said, we can sneak this back into position. Push it 
push it over the studs and resecure it. Come back and tighten our nuts down and get our hoses and our electrical plugged back in. Now at this point, there's two things you could do. Either trim the openings in your front fascia and get it reinstalled the same way that we removed it. Or if you have other flat toe components to get installed like we do, such as diode wiring or a braking system, now would be a great time to get all those components installed since the fascia is off and we have more than enough room to get that job done. Now once you've mounted all of your other flat toe components, like your braking system and your diode wiring, at this point you can go ahead and reinstall the front fascia. So what you wanna do is just hold that fascia up in position, and then you can take a marker and kind of mark where we need to cut some of the grill out, that way all of our components can be easily accessed. So I held our front fascia up and put some dots here where we need to make cuts. Now what I like to do whenever you do this is Cut as little as possible and test fit it because you can always come back and take more material out. So I'll go ahead and just use a pair of snips, pretty thin plastic, uh, to get this trimmed out. So after you have your bumper trimmed, you'd simply reinstall it the opposite way that you took it off. Just to give you an idea, as you can see, this is what the trimmed portion of our bumper ended up looking like. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Blue Ox base plate kit with removable arms on our 2019 Ford Explorer.